Okay, so uh, this is going to be, um, maybe it's going to be slightly less th than a refutation of Nerdistalgic's moral stance and moral arguments against The Cosby Show. Um, I, I'm, you know, he, he labels it controversial for two sets of reasons. I'm only going to be dealing with, with the, the content of the show. I'm not going to deal with the, uh, uh, the controversy, which is somewhat, let's say, natural surrounding the personal allegations against Bill Cosby, but just about the substance of the show and essentially the issues around race um, and, and some of the issues uh, on, on uh, sexism, which I think Nerdistalgic gets incredibly wrong um, in, in his analysis, his moral thinking is very weak. It's very unprincipled. He doesn't understand, let's say, the, the principled structure underlying uh, what he would call color blindness. I would call it non racialism. Uh, I, I would also point to Coleman Hughes' uh, essay on this, which there's a YouTube lecture um, on that. Um, for for a more elaborated argument on these lines, but I'll just point out as well that merely labeling something controversial um, and then proceeding to essentially rest on a kind of half-baked appeal to authority, which, you know, he, he specifically cites Professor Dyson, who he extracts uh, quotes uh, from in order to, to support his position. But this does, I mean, Professor Dyson's particular contribution uh, in, in, in the issues that were brought up were particularly weak and pathetic and fundamentally untenable. Very bad argument. Um, but, you know, merely labeling something controversial in a, a modern environment or, or a present day environment in which we have, uh, uh, you know, the, this fashionable and, f and, and fad of so-called anti-racism, of, of, you know, self, you know, sort of self-labeled progressives or, uh, you know, so-called liberals who are effectively a form of, of proto-fascist you know, um, systematizing of accountability so that you, you can't treat individuals with any modicum of, of, uh, uh, integrity and moral accountability. And if people can't bootstrap even their own self-ownership, how do you treat them? How can they even belong to a political community? How can they be a member of a polity even when they lose that kind of self-possession, when their behavior is just a reflection of the system? You, they're in a different moral system. And that fundamentally means that you enter into a kind of fascistic politics. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm somewhat jumping the gun here, but Dyson's point is that it's not that Bill Cosby said something that was technically wrong, but that it should not be said in public because you have to link personal accountability, which is a message that must be privately broadcast in the black community, uh, and the, the public face of it must be that the system itself is is unjust and must and you must give more money and if you don't place i mean this is this breaks democratic politics overtly um i, I don't actually think professor dyson's point on here is even that genuine i think that his story changes he will say whatever he needs this uh, whatever he needs to say to refute whatever it is that that, that he's going up against uh, uh, the, the only common theme in what he says is that he ends up systematizing accountability. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he's always produced fudged, morally murky um, rationalization for, for his point of view. But, I mean, th thus is uh, 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 endemic to proto-fascist uh, uh, thinkers. I mean, to, Professor Dyson is a moral halfwit. But I, I would I would actually say that he 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 has a, a kind of psychological bad faith on this point because it's very easy to sort of uh, um, attract uh, the lowest common denominator support. You know, there's there's a built-in network of this kind of retributivistic, you know, a, a systematization or or passing the buck onto the system, but. 
the reason why his point is untenable is because, well, if you don't tell policymakers that actually you need policy that specifically encourages personal um, ownership and, and responsibility and, and accountability, if, if you don't put that in, then giving more money to welfare queens, how, how does that solve anything? Or paying more money to schools that are failing for being failing schools is also paying schools to continue to fail because as soon as they reach a certain benchmark, then, then the money stops. So, you know, his, his, his own line on this that, oh, we need to have two separate messages and we need to have it segregated breaks the model of democratic politics. And it is fundamentally untenable. It's also stupid, but it's also morally backwards. And uh, that's what you get when you don't have a non-racialist mentality or, or you don't have a colorblind mentality to these issues. You end up per perpetuating them uh, and you, because you end up fundamentally infantilizing people because that is the gist, that is the, the overriding um, edge of your entire worldview, which is fundamentally disgusting and racialist, uh, uh, it, it, which, I mean, racism should not even be a word. Racism is not... In, it's racialism. It's always been racialism. It's someone is what makes someone a racist is that they are a racialist. That's that's the thing that actually has any kind of moral impact. The idea that there are differences between people, there are always differences between people, and there are always generalizations that can be drawn. That that's not the point of the principle of equality. Equality is a principle. It's a normative value. It's not true in reality. Groups of people are not going to be equal to other groups of people. If you find the medium or the median of one group and the median of another group, it's not going to be the same. So woman as a generalization, so this gets into the, the sexist issue, women as a generalization are more emotional. But that doesn't mean that just because you are a woman, you are by definition more emotional. That That's the difference between sexism and non uh, uh a non-sexualist uh, 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 worldview or, or, or framework. Generalizations are morally dangerous. You don't use them against individuals, but generalizations do generally hold true for an entire group. I don't know where that becomes useful to have. I mean, people will develop generalizations. Uh, you can't stop them from from being cognizant of generalizations but you can morally hold them to a higher standard of not applying those generalizations to every individual that come that crosses your path essentially especially when it when it's not morally uh, um, when it's particularly morally egregious to do so You know, there are some decisions which are morally neutral, which one makes on the basis of generalizations. Should I be in this part? Should I be in this neighborhood at this time of night? Well, the answer to that question is going to be informed by a set of generalizations to answer that question. But that's not dealing with an individual that's dealing with a, 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 a you know, a, a question of logistics or something like that. There are some questions that are basically morally neutral. The idea that we have to subjugate our generalizations in, in order to facilitate the ideologues of identity politics is fundamentally uh, an untenable and unworkable and a fundamental engine of, of intellectual bad faith, but also uh, a kind of self-stupefying um, denigration of one's own mind to, to make it susceptible and penetrated by you know sort of these um quite frankly the, the these fascist intellectuals like professor dyson who thinks that they have an a, a right to legislate uh, psychology and a kind of social psychology that needs to override common sense and even destroy the fabric of a common moral standard and a common value. Now, this also gets to my point as to the value of the Cosby show. The value of the Cosby show is not even, this is a sitcom. All sitcoms are going to be fundamentally, um, they're not going to be real. 
you know, I mean, so anecdotally, it has to, it has to amount to somebody else's family. Yeah, I mean, is that is that your point? That all all expressions of art or whatever has to has to has to match some anecdotal, you know. No, the the point of the Cosby Show was that it was an ideal, because we need ideals to strive for. But also, that's how we understand morality. You understand this show was designed for children. Uh, uh, for, for, for children to consume and be morally edified and understand principles. Okay, so th 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 that's, that's the point of the show. So get that through your thick skull, uh, um, uh, nerdistalgic. The, the other point is, um, that there is a necessity to bootstrap accountability, moral accountability and self-ownership. Because otherwise you are infantilized by the system and there's nothing to develop, there's nothing to grow, there's nothing that can even, you know, there's nothing to have any kind of fundamental integrity uh, associated with it. Because if you don't own yourself, then you don't own your own integrity. So you're, you're not even, you can never be a free agent. You can never exercise decision-making and free will. The idea that some people have to make very harsh decisions and it's not possible for some people is even a theme that the show explored. Okay. Now, the idea that, I, which I'll tell you the solution to this, and I guess this is a conservative value, but it's also a value based in pragmatism and reality because there aren't answers to everything, is stoicism. You need to be stoic about certain things, because maybe you can't overcome all the challenges in your life. Maybe you can get charity or something like that, but you can't expect that. And, you know, and maybe there isn't a government program that is specific. I mean, this is why I think all government programs should be, uh, that are welfare orientated should be designed to essentially target disadvantaged people that are that have this kind of self-ownership i think that's the only way that you have any kind of useful um liberal progress oh, see all these words have been tainted um but but, but that that's how you re have really transformative structures uh, uh, that are created by, by policy makers um And, and that is a function of, of trying to enhance a quality uh, that a society tries to do, that it tries to you know, help people that are already trying to help themselves, essentially, uh, is basically the, what that boils down to. But that's, that's not going to be the solution to everything. And sometimes you just need the stoicism in order to make advances intergenerationally. And that kind of intergenerational stoicism and, and progressive advance that must be laid at the feet of the, uh, of the individual. Because at some point, sadly, the truth why it's not possible for, for someone to do well is essentially is the fault of their parents, which they fundamentally have inherited. And th that is a fact of life. And expecting the, say, the state to supplement for the failings of a parent is fundamentally problematic because then if the state becomes a pseudo parent, you lose a free culture. You lose a culture that has liberty based in it. You, you end up with, with, you, you end up with a very distort, you don't end up with a liberal democratic society anymore. You lend, you, you end up with, with, with something else, which is fundamental. You know, you end up with a kind of socialism, a kind of, it, it I would say it will generally progressively develop towards a kind of overt, uh, uh, full-blown state socialism. Um, but anyway, so, so if we locate uh, you know, the, the diagnosis of the problem that way, then we actually have a moral framework in which we can uh, have a kind of democratic politics where we can try to maximize the help that the state provides to its disadvantaged citizens um, as well. And we can craft the right kind of policy towards those issues. But 
in some sense, it does require the capacity of the individual to develop a kind of stoicism, which is, is something that, that the show explicitly um, extols. Uh, and it's good that it does that. Um, and, and by the way, that institutional stoicism is utterly impossible to develop under the conditions of welfare queens. You, you can't perversely incentivize welfare queens and try to develop this kind of intergenerational stoicism of making progressive advancement. And, and this is the fundamental soft racism of the so-called, you know, sort of progressives and, 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 and the democratic kind of party that perpetuate these evil things and which Professor Dyson doesn't want us talking about. What an untenable position. Um, Another way to fix schooling is that you have a voucher system and you have free choice and you allow the market to improve the quality of schooling. And essentially then you could also uh, uh, increase the value of that voucher based on a means test as well, perhaps. Um, allowing poorer families to... Um, uh, uh, as a uh, compensatorily, you know, facilitate, uh, you know, tend towards class mobility, essentially. I mean, that's how all uh, real affirmative action programs uh, that, that should not be predicated in counting you know, racial characteristics, they should be counted in, in uh, they, they should be associated and pegged to actual disadvantages if you were actually serious about creating programs um, that actually ameliorate actual issues rather than just elevating the already uh, well-to-do and the already um, people who already have the capacity to in some sense take advantage of these programs you know it's it's like welfare for the middle class or the upper classes um, and this is the kind of moral corruption which facilitates the general problems in policy, you know, which uh, uh, I, I saw this, this wonderful quote, you know, it's, it's sort of the, um, the political, but also, you know, some of the economic uh, uh, elites uh, uh, are, are pissing on us and the media tells us that it's raining. And I feel like Nerdostalgic has essentially join the ranks of the journalists and 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 the news media he's he's somewhat bought into that narrative simply because it's been repeated so many times and because it has so many attractive buzzwords um you know where where is where is the thinking of this kind of stuff and i must say like the the, the poverty of his substantiation for the kinds of claims that he makes um, you know, also around the sexism stuff, you know, uh, okay, no, no, okay, well, he, he does the same thing with sexism as he does with the race thing, and, and let me give an example of the race thing, because it, it exemplifies it better, so he says that the problem with the Cosby show is that it showed, it exemplified uh, uh, it showed a kind of dichotomy in, in American media between, well, there are some good blacks and then there are some bad ones. And this is a show about some good ones. What is the alternative to good ones and bad ones? Is that there are no bad ones? That all the bad ones are only bad because the system made them that way and that they're not morally accountable f for their behavior are individuals not to be seen as either good or bad you 
the 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 okay uh, i guess i've actually already touched on this point because this is essentially the pound cake thing what was he doing stealing the pound cake yes he got shot and he lost his life but what was he doing stealing a pound cake oh, sorry okay, i guess i did already touch on this this is the sort of the the, the moral dyson point um Yeah, no, I, I, I did make this point fully already. The point is the, that it's wrong to apply a blanket generalization on a group, essentially, which is, you know, when I say that that is the problem, racialist points of view are the problem. Racialist generalizations are what is, is morally evil. Essentially, all of nostalgic's arguments come from the point of well are these racialist uh, if we if we if we reduce this to a racialist generalization i mean how do you even measure a generalization it's not possible to measure a, a generalization so his idea is that it needs to give us an exact parity to reality that it must be re re representative of lived ex of of the general real lived experience as if the this is already a kind of fascistic narrative. I mean, this is a fascistic way of analyzing things that no, 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 we must have an ideological treatment that in some great grand approximation and some grand na narrative summary and prescription is an antidote to the entire system. I mean, it, it just utterly destroys the idea of the individual. It utterly penetrates the the sanctity and the integrity that any individual can have they must just be counted as a category and collectivized and treated as some kind of particular mix of of that particular i mean it's just it's completely untenable because even within their own finicky accounting within the subset of the of the category and and breaking the category into subcategory i mean it's just the whole thing is in an in, in intellectual quagmire. It the whole thing is just it it's so the it, it's so brittle, it's so you know, it, it, it just is without satisfaction and resolution. It's just there so that it can be entertained by its own fudged untenable nature and then it basically every once in a while it lashes out and it passes the buck and it systematizes accountability so that they've got all this complexity that you get lost in in the maze of which and and then they just export all of this complication well we wouldn't deal with this if the system w wasn't already um you know had an equal equal equality of outcome Okay, so I, I am I am wrapping up now because I've I think I've made all my substantive points. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I just I found it particularly slimy that he gave the slimy Professor Dyson the last word in that exchange. Um, although I mean, it gives me the opportunity. I mean, look, I, I don't want to be too tough or no nostalgic. I mean, I I dis I despise his biased political point of view and framing of of these moral issues. But at least he laid out enough of of the evidence whatever that i could without having to do my own independent research i i could i could uh, uh uh disagree with him uh but his his moral thinking is a disgrace and um and quite frankly i just because there's there's a, enough of a popular uh, there's enough of, of a popularity um, to his points of view, which he's broadcasting and he's indulging in, or or he's he's extolling, um, is uh, is quite frankly not good enough. And I mean, I understand that it's hard to stand against this mob, and and it's hard to stand against this groupthink because if you disagree with them. Um, It 
they will call you controversial. And that kind of has a different meaning in that kind of totalitarian worldview. Which was the same meaning of controversial which he was relying on. It essentially means, you know, sort of put a mark, this person needs to go to the gulag, you know, after uh, a, 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 they need to be re-educated. Controversial means, you know, sort of earmark for re-education. Uh, they need to be bullied into submission. Uh, uh, they need to adopt our buzzwords. Uh, they need to be sensitive to, to our particular worldview. You know, it's interesting because what this all ends up doing as well is it ends up scapegoating capitalism itself in some sense as being substandard. Because, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if big daddy government could just provide everything and just fix everything and bestow dignity on your identity? I mean, but just because you've created an idolatry around your identity and you've made an argument that the system is to blame for its particular lack of self-esteem, and so therefore that's a, that's a conduit for you to extract resources and redistribute from other people, and, 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 you know, and, and racialize a kind of complaint against capitalism, which is really the structure that facilitates individual free will and individual decision and choice-making, and understanding that when we when we have bad outcomes, yes, you could say that we all are victims of the system in some way. But, you know, I would say that the correction of this is to have more common values and common morality so that we are capable of being more compassionate to one another, which is impossible with someone like Professor Dyson's worldview. Professor Dyson is, is fundamentally essentially driving a kind of segregation, a kind of moral seg segregation between people, a kind of divisiveness that is incredibly toxic. And uh, when people amplify and broadcast this kind of morality, I mean, I make videos to try to refute them, um, which I, I don't know if I've made a complete refutation, but I've at least made a counter argument um, that contradicts. I've so I've, I've produced at least a contradiction. I mean, essentially what Nostalgic does constantly in his record, uh, in, 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 in his uh, presentation is that he says that people should not be accountable for their own behavior. The, the system caused them to do it, essentially. That, that's his overriding moral thematic point that he rails against uh, 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 the, the story of The Cosby Show. And quite frankly, that's, that's just a low-brow, lowest common denominator gripe. It, it really is not, it, it's not morally tenable. It's intellectually deficient. And it fundamentally supports a kind of proto-fascistic uh, uh, dissolution of, of a liberal democracy and 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 real political discourse that has any hope of resolution so yeah i mean you could say that the cosby show was not about reality it was about morality and uh and in that it was a kind of ideal or, or, or picturesque, uh, picturesque standard that was essentially there to be aspirational but also to be morally edifying 
When I say aspirational, I mean the target to aspire towards, but you could achieve it even by not being a rich family. You, you, you could literally spend your whole life aspiring towards it and morally replicating or, or being the same moral force that was exemplified by the show. And that is, is a valuable contribution to culture, essentially. And it is especially uh, uh, valuable for uh, children. So when, when someone, I mean, you see, like, so he, he, he quotes letters of people that said, oh, my children want us to be like this family. But, uh, and, and then I, I can't remember the, the, how the letter said, oh, but, uh, but it's not realistic or something like that. But they didn't specify, are they talking about the wealth or are they talking about the morality? Because I would argue that there is a lot of psychological dysfunction in families. There are a lot of toxic families that are, are made up of members that are, are essentially self-destructive, but also destructive to the people around them, that are narcissistic, borderline personality disorder, cluster B type symptoms, and these sorts of things. And there is a kind of moral standard which does facilitate, at least if it doesn't facilitate the curbing of these kinds of tendencies, it does put people like that on notice. And it does also mean that when you have a dating culture, that those types of people get selected out for, for, for eligibility. They, people don't form relationships with them because they are um, identified as, as negative influences, as toxic influences. And so again, I would say that that might be an example of a family that has already failed, that, that the parent, excuse me, the, the parents have already failed in that family. But I mean, obviously, I don't know the details because the letter doesn't get into any kind of specificity when they say, that, well, th this show made our children say that they want us to be like the Cosby family, but it's not realistic. I don't know what they're referring to. I mean, are they referring to the shouting between the parents constantly? Are they referring to that the father is abusive or, or that the mother, you know, has her own kind of proclivity uh, uh, towards something um, and and is and is morally, let's just say, um, vacuous to some degree, or that there's some kind of moral failing in the family, um, in, in in some form in which the the, uh, the the family regulates itself. And I would say that, I mean, if, if it really is about the wealth thing, then you can say, well, no, no, actually, we are like the Cosby family already. We just have much less money and quantifying that difference. But that requires perhaps a, quite, a lot of kind of analysis about. It. But again, th this is the, um, the point about having an ideal and a standard, and even the Cosby show itself made mention of the importance of hard work and, you know, your own decisions and self-ownership and, re and responsibility and how hard it is uh, uh, to cope in the world. So it wouldn't be that hard to quantify that difference between, let's just say, a lower income household and the Cosbys, because the show itself explicitly trots out those life lessons and those general um, uh, pragmatic realities. So, um, okay, sorry, I, don't, I think that's, I think that's everything. Um, I guess all, all I can do is apologize that this is perhaps a very difficult recording to listen to without first watching the no nostalgic um, uh, video. Um, damn, I kind of wish I had said that right at the start of the recording. Uh, 
Anyway, I'll, I'll maybe I'll try to put that into the heading. I guess that's it.